As an astronomer, the question you hear the most is why isn't Pluto a planet anymore? More than 10 years ago, astronomers famously voted to change Pluto's classification, but the question still comes up. Dr. Christopher Palmer, the author of the article for which we got permission to turn into this video, says when he's asked directly if he thinks Pluto is a planet, he tells everyone his answer is no. It all goes back to the origin of the word planet. It comes from the Greek phrase for wandering stars. Back in ancient times, before the telescope was invented, the mathematician and astronomer Claudius Ptolemy called stars fixed stars to distinguish them from the seven wanderers that move across the sky in a very specific way. These seven objects are the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. When people started using the word planet, they were referring to those seven objects. Even Earth was not originally called a planet, but the Sun and Moon were. Since people use the word planet today to refer to many objects beyond the original seven, it's no surprise we argue about some of them. Although Dr. Palmer is trained as an astronomer and he studied more distant objects like stars and galaxies, he says he has an interest in the objects in our solar system because he teaches several classes on planetary science. The word planet is used to describe Uranus and Neptune, which were discovered in 1781 and 1846, respectively, because they move in the same way that the other wandering stars move. Like Saturn and Jupiter, if you look at them through a telescope, they appear bigger than stars, so they were recognized to be more like planets than stars. Not long after the discovery of Uranus, astronomers discovered additional wandering objects. These were named Ceres, Pallas, Juno, and Vesta. At the time, they were considered planets too. Through a telescope, they looked like pinpoints of light and not disks. With a small telescope, even distant Neptune appears fuzzier than a star. Even though these other, new objects were called planets at first, astronomers thought they needed a different name since they appear more star-like than planet-like. William Herschel, who discovered Uranus, is often said to have named them asteroids, which means star-like. But recently, Clifford Cunningham claimed that the person who coined that name was Charles Burney Jr., a preeminent Greek scholar. Today, just like the word planet, we use the word asteroid differently. Now, it refers to objects that are rocky in composition, mostly found between Mars and Jupiter, mostly irregular shaped, smaller than planets, but bigger than meteoroids. Most people assume there is a strict definition for what makes an object an asteroid, but there isn't, just like there never was for the word planet. In the 1800s, the large asteroids were called planets, Students at the time likely learned that the planets were Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Ceres, Vesta, Pallas, Juno, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and eventually Neptune. Most books today write that asteroids are different than planets, but there is a debate among astronomers about whether the term asteroid was originally used to mean a small type of planet rather than a different type of object altogether. These days, scientists consider properties of these celestial objects to figure out whether an object is a planet or not. For example, you might say that the shape is important. Planets should be mostly spherical, while asteroids can be lumpy. As astronomers try to fix these definitions to make them more precise, we then create new problems. If we use roundness as an important distinction for objects, what should we call moons? Should moons be considered planets if they are round, and asteroids if they're not round? Or are they somehow different from planets and asteroids altogether? I would argue we should again look to how the word moon came to refer to objects that orbit planets. When astronomers talk about the moon of Earth, we capitalize the word moon to indicate that it's a proper name. For much of human history, it was the only moon known. So there was no need to have a word that referred to one celestial body orbiting another. This, however, changed when Galileo discovered four large objects orbiting Jupiter. These are now called Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, the moons of Jupiter. This makes people think the technical definition of moon is a satellite of another object. 
And so, we call lots of objects that orbit Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Eris, Makemake, Ida, and a large number of other asteroids, moons. When you start to look at the variety of moons, some, like Ganymede and Titan, are larger than Mercury. Some are similar in size to the object they orbit. Some are small and irregularly shaped, and some have odd orbits. So they're not all just like Earth as moon. If we try to fix the definition for what is a moon and how that differs from a planet and asteroid, we're likely going to have to reconsider the classification of some of these objects, too. You can argue that Titan has more properties in common with the planets than Pluto does, for example. You can also argue that every single particle in Saturn's rings is an individual moon, which would mean that Saturn has billions upon billions of moons. The most recent naming challenge astronomers face arose when they discovered planets far from our solar system orbiting around distant stars. These objects have been called extrasolar planets, exosolar planets, or exoplanets. Astronomers are currently searching for exomoons orbiting exoplanets. Exoplanets are being discovered that have properties unlike the planets in our solar system. So astronomers have started putting them in categories like hot Jupiter, warm Jupiter, super Earth, and mini Neptune. Ideas for how planets form also suggest that there are planetary objects that have been flung out of orbit from their parent star. This means there are free-floating planets not orbiting any star. Should planetary objects that are flung out of a solar system also get ejected from the elite club of planets? Dr. Palmar explains how when he teaches. He ends this discussion with a recommendation. Rather than arguing over planet, moon, asteroid, and exoplanet, we probably need to do what Herschel and Bernie did and coin a new word. For now, Dr. Palmer uses world in his class, but he does not offer a rigorous definition of what makes something a world and what does not. Instead, he tells his students that all of these objects are of interest to study. A lot of people seem to feel that scientists wronged Pluto by changing its classification. Dr. Palmer says Pluto was only originally called a planet because of an accident. Scientists were looking for planets beyond Neptune, and when they found Pluto, they called it a planet, even though its observable properties should have led them to call it an asteroid. As our understanding of this object has grown, people like Dr. Palmer feel like the evidence now leads them to call Pluto something besides a planet. There are other scientists who disagree, though, feeling Pluto still should be classified as a planet. But remember, the Greeks started out calling the Sun a planet, given how it moved on the sky. We now know that the properties of the Sun show it to belong to a very different category from the planets. It's a star, not a planet. If we can stop calling the Sun a planet, why can't we do the same to Pluto? If you like this video, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell so you do not miss any upcoming videos.